Hey everyone, uh, so my name is Zara Mohammed. I'll be your facilitator for the University Club's uh, stream. Uh, I am super excited to be a part of the stream. So some might have recognized me. I am the Ottawa chapter coordinator for uh, our Tetra Club here, part of the Tetra Society of North America. Um, I just quickly a bit about myself, but the show is not about me or I'm not a speaker. Um, so as I was saying, I'm super excited to be a part of the stream. Uh, what will we be talking about? There's two sessions. First session where Marcus Bingler will lead. He will be talking about capstone projects and completion about design projects um, in a university setting. Our second stream, will, which will be in the same room here. So if some of you decide to stay at 2 p.m. or go to another session, but it's gonna be the same uh, room, will we be talking about specific university clubs and we'll have two um, individuals who will leaders in their clubs and who will talk about what they've done what they've accomplished and what's it like running a university club so i do want to introduce our first speaker marcus fengler he is a lecturer in the university of british columbia's department of mechanical engineering where he teaches mechanical design his passions include design for dis disability and sustainable development before becoming a lecturer at the University of British Columbia, Marcus worked with Neil Squire Society, and he is no stranger to designing equipment for somebody with special needs or varying abilities. Um, so just quickly, for those who uh, are unfamiliar with capstone projects, uh, myself who did an engineering undergrad and then as well stayed in school for some time in grad studies, um, we do end up having quite a bit of design courses and specifically that final year uh, design project, a yearly length project um, where univer the university students tackle on real problems. A majority of the times the university partners, uh, partners up with industry. Um, but lately, and we've been having a lot of success is that universities have taken a keen interest in tackling on uh, requests that come through Tetra. Um, so, this is something that I wished I was exposed to when I was younger. Um, saying that is that I was, as a young adult, trying to take on the, the world at that time, I didn't realize that uh, technology has been so slowly advancing in the accessibility realm, uh, that we're so keen on having more Netflix options and faster phones and faster cars, but there are actually individuals who are not living as fulfilling and um, independent lives as the majority of us do and how the world's designed not to accommodate for everyone. So um, in Ottawa here too, we have uh, been uh, partnering up with universities and colleges to take on problems that clients come through Tetra. So just wanted to give that brief overview just to have an understanding and uh, I'll let Marcus take it away. I think he has a great presentation for everyone and giving that perspective from a, a university lecturer and how his students have felt about it or that whole experience overall and which I'm really interested to hear about. So Marcus, take it away. I think we'll leave some time. Uh, I'll be the one to, don't worry about getting lost with time. I'll be there to remind you if you're getting close and let's have time for some questions. So Marcus, take it away. Okay, so uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, so to uh, maybe expand a little bit more, um, I worked for Neil Squire for 12 years um, in the uh, research and development and product development um, group. Um, and that was in the sort of the mid 1980s forward when uh, computer technology had basically become commercially available. And uh, the fellow who started the, uh, the, it was a foundation at that time, um, Bill Cameron made a connection between, hey, these, uh, the advent of the PC would uh, there's potential there for for um, uh, really enhancing um, the lives for, for folks, particularly those with communication difficulties. Um, but just also to get uh, because because the the use of PCs was becoming more prevalent um, to get everybody on board, and so uh, a focus or part of what we were working on were were uh, assistive devices that would allow you to access uh, a keyboard if you can't use a keyboard or a regular keyboard. Um, and and, and on, on a side project, and this is what, what initially 
pulled me pulled me there was the uh, we were also working on robotic appliance technologies um, in the 1980s. Uh, robots were going to save the world, uh, and 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 that, that wasn't necessarily a focus on persons with disabilities. That was just that was another branch that that where uh, robotic uh, assistant uh, could could potentially play a role. Um, and for those of you that you know nerd out and pay attention to that to that world, you can see there's still lots of active work happening there, um, and it's really still much more in the R research stage than it is in a, hey, you can go to Walmart and buy one of these things stage. Um, so I came after you know spending 12 years doing that, then I went and did some commercial work, uh, product, product development work, completely different world. Um, and then I uh, um, took a posi position at, at UBC. So the way that uh, projects got to UBC, at least when I was there, right, you know, in the early stage was, through me, because I, 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 I made connections back to uh, Neil Squire, I already had established connections to, uh, to Tetra and the, the Disability Foundation here in Vancouver. Um, and so maybe that said, that, you know, that's one component of the story. And I think that's something for, for folks that are wondering, well, how do other institutions do this? I, I think you need to cultivate an internal champion to make this happen. It's going to be difficult to do this if you don't, if you if you if you don't have if you if you don't have that. Um, okay, so I'm over, I've already deviated from my script. So let me let me move on with my slide presentation and uh, let's go here. Why is my slide not advancing? Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I actually want to talk a, a little bit more broadly than Capstone, and I'll, I'll give you the, the reasons why, because I think there may be opportunities that um, the audience is not fully uh, aware of, and it may, may help to frame uh, your expectations, but also um, those, those opportunities. So here's an overview of what I propose to talk about. Design project courses in mechanical engineering as a, as a proxy for other engineering departments in post-secondary, uh, and other departments in post-secondary institutions across the country. Um, the types of projects that we've done to, to give you a smattering of, of, of what the kind of scope could be, some of the benefits, how it works, and uh, some, some, some cautions to make sure that you are managing the success of that, of that program. So what is Capstone? And I think Zara already touched on a lot of this. It's a final year project course in MEC. It, it runs April to, uh, sorry, September through to April. It's a six credit course. Uh, that's considered a big course. Um, students work in teams of four or five students. These are all mechanical engineers, but uh, they may be in specialized options. So in MEC, we have four different uh, streams. There's the general MEC stream. There's the uh, those that specialize in fluid, so we call it and, and heat transfer, so thermo fluids, which is nobody outside the university really knows what that is, I think. Um, we have a mechatronics team, so that's combining electronics and mechanics. Um, and we also have a biomedical stream, so that's students with a focus on biomedical engineering. And a lot of assistive device projects uh, tend to get picked up by the, uh, by the biomed stream students. You don't necessarily need to have all of that in an engineering program to be able to, to, to host uh, a, a project, um, but it, this, is, this is how MEC does it. Um, wh what the students do in Capstone is, this is, this is really their first shot at the, what we call the sort of the full gamut of the design process, which goes from problem definition. So somebody comes with their idea of what a problem is. The students as, as young engineers need to go look at that and go, is that really the problem we have to solve? Um, and, and then take that, um, take that all the way through to a functional solution in a, in, for, for Capstone with the six credit course, it's a functioning prototype at the end. Sometimes that prototype for in a, in a, in a call it in the, in, for a Tetra project in a uh, smaller scope project, uh, that is the solution that a client uh, might implement. In other cases, it may be the, the, the functioning model on which the final solution gets built. Okay, so it's a test, test platform. Uh, in, 
in the capstone project at in in, in MEC, um, every team gets a, a an internal budget uh, from the department. This year, it's I think it's about seven hundred and fifty dollars. We do have um, uh, we do also set aside an, an a second uh, pot of money and. Um, and this was this was determined by a, a former department head to basically to subsidize um, what we call worthy projects. Um, most of the time, for Capstone, very bluntly, we look to the, the the sponsoring client because a lot of them are from industry; they're commercial enterprises. Uh, we look to them for um, dollar support as well. We say, "You're getting something out of this. You got to, you know, you got to. We want some commitment." Um, and it'll make a better project if the students have uh, access to better resources. So generally we do that. Um, we ease off on that when it comes to Tetra-like projects because we're going, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this with a, uh, a not-for-profit, sometimes private individuals. Um, so if you, you know, some guidance around that, I would say, uh, again, for the internal champion, uh, lobby your department head to go, hey, this is a worthy cause, worthy initiative, put a bit of extra money aside aside here for that. Um, Zara, there is a, a person in the waiting room, I'm just going to admit, okay. Um, other kinds of support that exist, um, so the, the department has uh, um, technical staff and facilities and Capstone has access to, to those folks. So they can submit uh, part designs for manufacture, they have to pay for that in, with a, at a subsidized rate out of their project budget just to keep it real and to keep things. Um, um, it, it's, it's in, there's an educational component to it and also a cost control component to it. Um, uh, but so uh, part of my other job at UBC is I run the, uh, the machine shop facility. So I have four machinists that report to me. Um, so mechanical components, uh, production, so custom part production, part of what we do. Um, if you're not that person, if, you're, if I'm talking to the champion at other institutions, um, find that person and, and get, them, get them on board. It's important. Likewise, for, for other technical services. And generally speaking, um, for my staff and for the other technical folks, um, they love to be supportive of worthy causes. So it's not, it's not really a hard sell. Okay? But I think that's worth, uh, that's worth pointing out. Come back here. Come on. Hang on. I'm getting to... Okay, so uh, in that was fourth year, but as a pre, you know precursor to that and working running backwards in third year we have a, a three credit course that is a design project course. The scope here is problem definition to specification, so there is no build, um, but a key key uh, component of of our third year course is stakeholder interaction and for the students to actually and this is the first time that they're really really wrestling with. Um, a problem where somebody else hasn't defined all the requirements for them. Okay, um, what we've done in, in in those kind of projects is uh, for for uh, the disabled. Uh, so for Disability Foundation has the BC Mobility Opportunity Society, that's the Trail Rider Program, uh, and also the DSA Disabled Sailing Association uh, sailboat system. The students have taken those. Two devices, the Martin 16 and the Black Diamond Trail Rider, and use them as a vehicle for doing design exercises, suggesting improvements that are actually something that those associations, uh, societies can 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 potentially implement. Okay, and that's uh, uh, getting the students involved there early opens their eyes up to the to that that whole world of oh, I didn't even know this existed. I'll say uh, UBC campus, we have 70-ish thousand students showing up um, on a typical day when we're in person. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, persons with disabilities are 
not a, not apparent. So they are for for a kid that has never been exposed to uh, dealing with someone with with uh, with, with a disability. Um, they're not otherwise really getting much exposure to that on the on the university campus, and that's a, that's a whole other issue that that people should be you know everybody should be coming to campus. Um, but it, it is the nature of the uh, it is the nature of of, of how things are. Um, so through the third year course, and I run the third year course. Okay, um, I, I I kind of slightly sometimes go push this agenda. Um, to expose the students to make them aware of potential uh, impacts their careers could have, uh, to, ex to expose the community and make that connection. At the same time, also, um, there are some, some real benefits to us as far as our teaching program goes, but I'll, I'll talk to that in, in a little bit further down. Um, second year in our program, uh, we work and I teach the second year project course as well. Um, that's a completely artificial constructed project course and the, the goals of what we're trying to, to, to do there um, really, really constrained. It's, uh, I mean, the closest thing you could think of is, is something like what you might have seen on, uh, on, on TV in Robot Wars or something like that. Kind of an artificial little constrained um, uh, scope pro project. And there's there are pedagogic reasons for that. Um, it, for our program, doing Tetra-like projects in that would be very, very difficult to, to implement and wouldn't fit the teaching needs. Um, in first year, and I, I'm, I'm not directly involved in, in first year, in first year in the introductory, where they do introductory design projects, um, there are some projects that they do and they're very, very basic um, where they are interacting with uh, with stakeholders, and in some cases in, uh, at, at UBC, that has been um, um, uh, stakeholders who happen to to have uh, physical disabilities. Um, here are some of the types of projects that we've taken on in in, in the past, and uh, this is by no means a comprehensive list. Um, last year, uh, one of the projects that got taken on was uh, a, a climbing assist for, for wheelchairs. So looking at power wheelchairs in Vancouver, which is a, you know, supposedly a highly accessible city, there are lots of places where, bang, you're, you're running into a, a, a five inch or six inch high curb that you need to get up and get down. So uh, some students worked on this. Um, I'm gonna say that the end result, meh, uh, it, 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 it it, it, didn't, uh, it didn't manifest into a, a useful solution, but it sure opened up the eyes for the students and it provided some groundwork for potentially another group to go on to actually make a, 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 call it a, a, be a better attempt. Okay. Um, uh, there were, have been projects, number of projects looking at wheel cleaners. So for someone who relies on, 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 on a wheel device for, for, uh, for getting around, uh, going from outside to inside, particularly in uh, places where you might have uh, snow or like here in Vancouver, lots of rain. Um, uh, dirty, wet wheels is, is, a, is a problem and trying to come up with a way to, uh, to, to address that continues to be an issue. Um, uh, sort of, uh, uh, and, and the, so the first two were solutions that were aimed at, uh, at, at a broad user groups. Um, and then there are projects that are much more like Tetra where it's one individual and a specific solution for that individual. Um, in this case, a wheelchair mounted, um, backpack, um, system that could store a backpack behind the wheelchair and bring it forward where it's accessible uh, to, to, the, uh, to, to the person. Uh, and on and on, um, the Disabled Selling Association and Ad Adaptive uh, Paddleboard Program, uh, Adaptive Kayaking Options, we're, we're on the ocean here. So water sports is a, is, is a, big, is a big thing here. Um, and to varying degrees of su success, um, 
we done, uh, there have been projects looking at assistive devices again, so um, uh, for, for control, for access control, for, uh, for communication purposes, the similar kind of things that are still, you know, that are available out on the market, but improvements or filling a niche that the market offerings just don't yet, don't yet cover. Um, we also did a project, and this wasn't for for the um, for the Disability Foundation, but this was a private individual uh, who um, himself is blind, but also had a service where he would uh, print uh, business cards uh, in Braille for folks, or add Braille to business cards. Uh, and there was a, a project; it makes a great mechanical project to uh, to try to build a, a Braille printing press. Um, so some of the other departments at, at UBC um, now, uh, I think now in its third, fourth, fourth year of operation, School of Biomedical Engineering. Um, so we have a biomedical option that's existed for, for a while, but there's now a whole School of Biomedical Engineering. Typical enrollment there is about 75 students a year. Um, they're looking for projects. I, I, I don't speak for School of Biomedical Engineering, but uh, for, for folks that are looking for, hey, where do I go to pitch my projects? Well, you can certainly come to me in mechanical engineering, but realize that there are other opportunities. And so if you are thinking of, if you're in that category of person wanting to approach a post-secondary institution, don't just focus on mechanical engineering, go, go, go big, okay? Uh, we have a school of biomedical engineering, we have electrical and computer engineering, so that's electronics kind of stuff and electrical devices, uh, some, often tied in with some kind of software. Uh, we have an engineering physics program, so um, uh, that's actually part of science in the physics department, but it's accredited uh, to give degrees in engineering, so there's a, this weird overlap. And engineering physics is kind of a, a very broad field, they do mechy stuff, they do electronic stuff, they do stuff based heavily on physics, do some programming, um, very, very broad. Uh, also very broad integrated engineering. So that's a, um, I call it, that's the smorgasbord or the jack of all trades in, in, in engineering department, uh, similar to engineering physics in a sense that, that they're very, very broad without the heavy physics focus. Uh, metals and materials, that's uh, a focus on, uh, on material um, specific projects, adapting new exotic materials um, and metal matrices. Um, there may be some opportunities there, particularly if you're looking at uh, projects involving things like uh, carbon fibers, um, where you're trying to design a chassis of some kind, uh, and that probably be a, a a place to go for at least part of that. Um, new started last year um, is a manufacturing engineering program and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shill here for that. Uh, it's a new program. There are, um, I think we have 50 students in second year. This year I, I teach a small component to the manufacturing engineering program but they will have third and fourth year capstone projects uh, we'll be looking for, for projects as well uh, as the School of Biomedical Engineering. Um, and then uh, just have to, have to mention, even though they're not in um, and not an engineering department and actually not in the Faculty of uh, Applied Science, it's computer science. Um, don't overlook computer science departments, particularly for things where um, maybe software apps that could be uh, useful to somebody, um, a modified app and, and um, sometimes a solution can be heavily software based um, for particularly, uh, you know, accessing new media, uh, looking at uh, new phones, et cetera. Uh, there, there may be maybe a place to, to take projects that way. Um, so as far as the benefits go, well, for the clients, uh, I think some of it may seem really, uh, really obvious. I think what's maybe not so, uh, not so obvious is that, um, the um, getting a bunch of university students to come to somebody who might actually be in, in a situation where they're isolated socially because of their disability, um, that, that it goes beyond just getting that person a, a, a solution. Um, 
uh, as far as the students go, uh, you know, it's the removing the blinkers and opening their eyes up a little bit and, and um, looking at, uh, at career options that they hadn't considered before. And this is, uh, I'll aim this at Ruby. Um, you know, if you're looking for future employees, uh, they're, 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 you know, they're, that may be a, a, a place to, uh, a place to look for sure. And if anything, the, for the students to gain an understanding that the role of an engineer is to solve problems for everybody in society. It's not just, you know, to make a faster toaster. Um, as far as the community goes, yeah, I think, I think just the, um, that there's exposure for the, the population of persons with disabilities and, and, and uh, a realization among folks who, um, you know, have been, uh, not, uh, have been granted with, uh, with um, privileges that they may not necessarily be aware of just yet. And this, um, and I think this, this serves the community better if, if members of the community from disparate parts of the community can, can connect really well. Um, for the university, it means a connection to the folks, you know, they're outside the gates of, uh, uh, of, of Point, Point Grey in, in UBC Vancouver's case. Um, and it's a way to reach out and have direct benefit to the immediate surroundings of the, of, of the university. Um, also, as far as university programs go and accreditation goes, so engineering programs are accredited. Um, the, the requirements for accreditation is for students to get exposed to um, being able to deal with open-ended problems, to deal with, uh, to deal with people who are not engineers, uh, to communicate well with them. Uh, Etc. And and so that that can get trotted forward as a um, certainly as 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 a as, as a strong plus. Um, I will say that the um, for uh, the 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 way that or the um, particularly with the third year project and the impetus for getting students involved in the third year project is that that say, for me, that's a, um, a catalyst for them to possibly pick up a project related to um, solving a problem around that faced by someone with a disability in fourth year. Um, for any instructors who are listening, okay, here's some really strong pros for if, when you're looking for design projects. One of the things I, I, I really try to avoid is to get students to give them a project where there are already a plethora of similar solutions available out there. Um, it, 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 it doesn't necessarily challenge the students too much. It, it may set them up, uh, you know, not, not intentionally, uh, but, but they may borrow uh, ideas from somewhere else to get their course credit and just put it aside. Uh, and in the case of, of, of dealing with um, trying to solve a problem for someone with a physical disability, a, you, all of you are, are, are aware that the market out there underserves this, this group. Um, typically, there's not a lot of money. Uh, it's, not, it's not lucrative, so businesses aren't getting into it. Um, and so what that also means from a teaching side of things is that, eh, no, nobody's got a solution for this one yet. Um, so for the student experience, it's like, oh, geez, um, I really have to come up with something. And to hit some of the pedagogic goals that somebody like me has, that's a, that's a plus, okay? So if you're pitching this to, the, to, to a university, You've got, got that pitch, uh, instructors who are considering taking something like this on, uh, you know, mull that, mull that one over, it, 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 it helps, it helps a lot. It makes it easier to actually frame uh, a project and, and set it up so that your students actually uh, re really engage on, on, on that side. And it really hits a lot of the accreditation points that um, in Canada, we have the CEAB, the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board, 
Um, that's, that's the quality control folks that make sure that we do our jobs correctly. Um, some cautions. Okay, so very first off is this is student work. And what does that mean? It means that it's not equivalent to going out and hiring a pro professional, okay? And I, I, for the students that are ready to hear this, I, I, I tell them, hey, come on, you know, if, uh, if I'm gonna build, say I'm gonna build a house, am I gonna go to, you know, that contractor over there that's already built 60 houses and has gone through that a few times? Or am I gonna go over this way to this person that's just hammered up their shingle slightly crooked that says, uh, you know, new business, starting house building, wanna be number one? Um, I'm probably gonna go with the seasoned, seasoned contractor. Um, so uh, students are, you know, even though they're fourth year, they're, by the time they're hit, hit fourth year, fairly mature, they're definitely bright. Um, some of them come in with, uh, with a, you know, a good fistful of experience, but most of them haven't cut their teeth on, on things yet. And so the chance that they're gonna make a, a mistake somewhere along the way or, 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 or not be able to see everything, it's, it's actually, realistically, it's actually pretty high. Um, does that mean they, they, nothing ever works? No, that's not the case, but you have to temper your expectations some, some, somewhat along the way. Um, student work also means uh, that this is a one of, you know, a whole fistful of courses that they're taking at that time. So it's not like dealing with, uh, you know, okay, the contractor building your house um, in that you don't have uh, un undivided attention on, on the project. And on top of that, um, for accreditation purposes, there are certain things we have to get the students through in the capstone course uh, or in the third year course that might, you know, as, as far as benefit to the client goes, may not be viewed as by the client as having much benefit to them, but it's a cost of doing, call it a cost of doing business. We have to do this in order to run this course. Uh, the we have to put the students through this. Uh, it, it is what it is. Um, so other things that are sometimes, uh, call it points of friction, um, those course requirements and the schedule for the course. So as much as a client for Capstone in general might want the solution by whatever, the end of November, they're not getting it till April because that's how the course is structured. And they, we, 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 we set up the agreements um, that way. Um, as far as the kind of hours that students can put in, okay, so the expectation for students in, in, uh, in one term in a three credit course for so the first half of capstone will be worth three credits um, is eight hours per week. And that includes that one hour a week of, of lecture and a one hour a week of meeting. So, so really they only have six hours. And oh, by the way, those six hours, uh, they're also gonna do some homework of some kind uh, so take at least another hour away and now you're down to five hours and in that five hours they're trying to work on and manage their project and learn how to manage their project uh, as they're going along. Okay, uh, A term is 13 weeks. So you're talking about maybe in, in, in for six credits, 150 to 170 hours that a student can put, put into something. Okay. Um, and so you you need to you need to be careful to make sure that 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 um, that, that meets uh, expectations. Um, last thing I want to talk about is intellectual property and intellectual property issues, only because I ran into this once. So um, back in the days when I was at Neil Squire and offered project to a post secondary institution, and uh, I put forth an idea uh, for students to work on, and I sponsored them. Um, and when the students came, they came up with a solution um, and uh, offered the solution to me, the institution then came to me and said, and oh, by the way, uh, here's how you can license this solution from us. Um, I, 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 was, I was more than taken aback by that. Um, so, 
for instructors who are considering taking this on and for people who are proposing projects, sort out ownership of intellectual property right up front, just have an agreement on that. What we typically do here at UBC is that uh, a um, the way that um, Canadian patent law works and what the university supports is that um, the student that does the work is the creator of the intellectual property. UBC policy says that if you create intellectual property, property as part of your coursework, you own it 100%. Okay, it, it wasn't always the case, but that's, that's the current situation at, at UBC. We ask the students to assign the IP. We can't require, we ask the students to assign the IP to the sponsors. In some cases where there's, we call it significant value, uh, we suggest to the sponsor, we, again, we can't require, we suggest to the sponsors that there's a monetary exchange in, in return for the intellectual property. This is broadly across capstone, so that's not, not necessarily for, um, for Tetra-like tetra projects. Um, most students who will take on a Tetra project will have no trouble assigning intellectual property rights Okay, should that should that be an issue? But you should sort that out up front, uh, only only to avoid what what in ninety nine point nine percent of the cases is just going to be some hurt feelings of some kind where somebody thinks somebody's taken advantage of of somebody else. Okay, um, that's really all I have to present, and I've nattered on for quite a bit, so I'm certainly open to to, to questions. So I'll I'll stop there. Yeah, I, we are good for time. Uh, we have good time. It's uh, about one forty, so I would open the floor up to anyone that has any questions. I think uh, Nicole in the chat had a question. She said, "Is it possible to see the uh, where, we, WC backstorage and deployment project as well as the paddle board adaptation?" Um, that's uh, Eric. Both of those were involved Eric Mullendyke. So um, I don't I don't have access to the to the to the student work files, and I have to follow the rules uh, at, at UBC. I, I cannot show um, student work without direct permission from the students. So um, ping me an email mfangler at mech.ubc.ca. Um, and I will see what I can do, but it, it's not, it's not going to be, I, I won't get it to you Monday. No, okay. it's okay. Okay. No worries. Maybe, uh, Marcus, just before you, uh, just before we end the session today, if you could write your email in the chat, if anyone. Sure. To, uh, sure. You can, uh, you can, you can, yeah, you could, you could, you can, you can, you can, you can Google me. Um, oh yes, yes. We can Google you. I think I'm Sure, uh, your info is up there. Uh, but but there's there's my there's my UBC okay. address. Yeah, I did spell it correctly. Okay, good. Um, and I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to, um, to 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 take emails from from anybody. Any kind of questions that you have, um, treat you like my students. There are no dumb questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I might give a dumb answer. Um, Okay, I learned that after uh, a while that there are no dumb questions. Um, I, I have a question for you, uh, Marcus. Sure. Um, you know, in Ottawa, we are uh, kind of expanding on uh, the University of Ottawa and Algonquin College and giving them some of our client requests to take on. Uh, the one thing that I um, um, sometimes kind of go on with a risk, because they are, they are students, uh, sometimes you have very uh, motivated students. Sometimes uh, they treat it like a class and, you know, 50 is good enough for me and uh, I'm out. And uh, it, obviously I was once a student too, so I know all of that. Uh, but sometimes there's really, really good work that comes out of, um, especially young individuals who really want to put their skills uh, that they're learning to use. But especially with client requests that... Um, we hope in a timely manner that uh, we could give the client a finished product. Um, so what would you say on uh, 
from your experience from the other end as a professor, how you motivate the students or what feedback would you give or if the type of projects to give to a university course settings that there could be a potential that uh, projects or don't get finished into a completed, uh, say, product or prototype. I know at certain cases at uh, U of O is that if they're not completely finished or they go through a prototype one phase, the second year that comes on, they take it on to uh, complete or uh, re-engineer or almost redesign at times. So I kind of just want to get your feedback on that. Okay, so um, I think with, you know, in, in, in the cautions, if that didn't come through, is that student work is um, their, their primary their primary goal is, is to get their degree program and they have to focus on meeting accreditation requirements. And so it's not infrequent that it happens that a project gets only to a certain level where they've solved some of the problems, not all of the problems and the solution is not complete. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it can, it can happen. And, and this would be something to, uh, to capture in the proposal and in the in the in a call it contractual obligation to right. the students. Okay, um, so I, I should I should back up and just kind of go. I'm involved in capstone. I don't dictate to the capstone coordinator how to how to how to handle this. Mm. And and there are multiple multiple stakeholders at play. Right there's the university. It it has it runs its course from this time to this time and has so many resources it makes available. Uh, there's the interest of the students and then the interest of the the the, the client. Um, we do we do tell the students um, you know mm -hmm. to work to work as a professional means you say what you're going to do and then you do what you said you were going to do mm -hmm. and and to maintain that integrity and. Uh, students try to try to try to embrace that. So things that we have had happen on the you know on on, on the good side that you could look forward to um, is that some students uh, you know at graduation well hey they couldn't find a job right away so they volunteer mm. to continue to to finish a project that, that uh, Braille printing press project ended up being two of the students in the first round of that that we did. Um, went on and and essentially rebuilt the whole thing to try to get it working uh to, and 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 got a a version of it working where hey you could you could actually you could actually use it yeah uh, um so i i think i think the um caught you know to expand the cautions a little bit i would keep the scope smaller that yeah. braille printing press project um it, it never, ever resulted in a final, wow, here it goes, 10,000 cards and not a, not a flaw. It's just, it, 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 that's, 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 that's unrealistic given the level of experience that the students have For sure. um, and, and the resources and time that they, that they have available. As far as motivating students goes, um, I would, I would, I would suggest, uh, you know, I'm, and, and I've sat on both sides, giving projects mm -hmm. before I went to UBC, and then um, sort of re receiving projects at, at this end. Um, I would say you you need to go uh, look at the, the proposal that you that you have, and and if you if you are getting a proposal back from students that you're not comfortable with, you got to say something to the instructor. So so don't just sit back and be passive and just go, oh my God, yes, uh, I'm so glad they took my project. Uh, the students don't really look that excited. Um, um, you have full rights to go, yeah, okay, uh, you've got your requirements that you've outlined to me. Here are my requirements and, and make, it, make that part of the package. You're doing the students a favor to hold them up to a higher bar. Right. Okay, so so I I I'd say that and um and and at least at least that gives you a foothold to go back to the institution to say hey uh you know this is what we agreed upon um if we agreed upon it right mm -hmm. and so 
let's 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 push this and make this good. And and you're trying to do that in a way that's a win, not not a stick that you're hitting somebody with. You know, a, a contract is is a piece of paper that formalizes an agreement between two parties where they mutually respect each other. Yeah. It, it's not it's not it's it's not, it's not it's not a stick where you just get to stand back and poke each other with that. Um. So so I suggest um that that mechanism put that in place so there's clear clear understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and there should be language for what are the exit criteria. Okay, and by that I mean is, okay, what happens if uh, option A doesn't work out? What is option B? What, what, what is acceptable to both parties? So, so, so that, would, that would help if, 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 uh, if you went into it, uh, structured things that way. And again, for any you know, instructors listening, um, I'm probably not telling you anything you're all, you aren't already aware of. No, no, um, those are really good points. But I, I do notice that Glenn has a question. Sure. He has his hand up. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your presentation, Marcus. Uh, very informative. I have a bit of a, a bit of a soft spot for um, the whole university clubs thing because I ran um, a project in Ontario here whereby we involved uh, 10 um, universities and colleges in the greater Toronto area. And it certainly was a wonderful experience because it gave me uh, a whole lot of insight into um, different professors, different students, um, constitutions between universities. Um, yeah, everyone was unique. <laughs> everyone was different. Um, we kind of had to reinvent the book over and over and over again with every school and uh, some were successful, some weren't. Um, but uh, the, the question I guess really more is, um, it was a lot of work to, uh, from the Tetris side of things, to go all around all the different universities and try and be involved in all the different projects. Uh, a lot of the things you talked about you know, trying to get contracts with students and professors, win over champions at the schools, different things like that. Um, not that I wouldn't want to do the work if I had the opportunity to do it again, but I think I would try and do it a little smarter if I could. Uh, is there anything that you know of that Tetra could take advantage of, like a Dean of Engineering, um, you know, conference like this one, uh, this one's online, obviously, but it could be, you know, in a couple of years in person, where it would be all the different deans of engineering's uh, programs from different schools, whereby we could go and make one presentation and look for a champion at all the schools. Um, so, so there is there 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 is such a beast. I would need to. It's you know, it's above my pay grade, but I know that it happens. Um, uh, I can contact the Associate Dean of Students here in Mechanical Engineering. Um, if you d don't mind, just ping me, an, ping me an email so that that, that becomes my to-do list. And uh, I, will, I will see what it would take to give Tetra a forum there to, to coordinate that. Okay? And, and I think the pitch, uh, the pitch should be, hey, here's how we help you with accreditation. Okay, so, so if you, you know, know your audience, what are, what are they interested in? Um, you know, uh, community involvement. Okay. You know, it's one of those things. Yeah, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should do that. Yeah. But, but really what we get measured by is, um, do we hit accreditation? There's, there's nothing gets the attention of a department head and a Dean like mention accreditation. So, so, um, Possibly, if, if you spent a little bit of time, go go to the CEAB and look at the uh, uh, accreditation requirements. And if you have trouble with that, I'll, I'll see if I can lead lead you to that. Mm -hmm. um, and and you use that as as your leverage point to say, and here's how we help you address this, and give them a package. Okay, and 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 so what I mean by that is is it's it's like for anything. Um, if, if, if there's a need and a solution happens to walk in the door that more or less fits that need, mm -hmm. right? The busy person who's got a billion things going is going to go, Ooh, 
I think I'll take that solution right there and let's 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 make that go right. And then you get feathers in uh, in, in in their caps for for doing good things and all that. And and let them let them let them do that. You, I think I think you can get folks on board. Um, deans are crazy busy folks. They they're they're the kind of folks who are working seventy hours a week. It's yeah. it's not it's not a <laughs> when it comes to oh who wants to be the new dean there's a whole lot of sitting on hands and averting of eye contact <laughs> that happens so um so i think you can make a pitch there but but you want to you want to you want to put that together as far as uh each institution is unique and has unique needs uh, <laughs> um every department at ubc in engineering is unique and has unique needs and and there's a you know, the engineer in me goes, this lack of standardization drives me nuts. Um, uh, again, if you, if you put together a, a, a clear package that lets them say, okay, this is what I get, this is what I get, this is what I get, uh, it may help to steer the process for, 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 these, for these departments. Um, a lot of the, like the, how capstone gets put together, um, depends on who the coordinator is and that may be a rotating duty because it's a lot of work um and so you're do, again doing them a favor if you come with a well here's our package um versus hey can you help us work this out yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense because we were we had a package but because everyone was so different and we were really just creeping our way through it right from the beginning without any real structure or background to to pull from we were kind of just starting the whole process fresh and uh you know we we struggled we we hired community coordinator sorry school coordinators at every school but we found out very quickly it all really depended on that coordinator how much touch they had with the professors um but i think we've got a really huge opportunity because we've got some great coordinators in cities like Kingston or uh, we don't yet have a chapter in Waterloo but I think we should because yeah. these are some of the top engineering schools in the country and we really need to tap into that I think so yeah yeah and again it's uh it's uh if if you can come in with a package of a uh, here's what we can do for you mm -hmm. uh and and you don't have to so much uh, uh you know you don't have to you, selling them on the idea of what it does for you um, uh, is 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 maybe not not the way to to focus this. And if you if you can take legwork away, here's the here's the proposed IP agreement. We're open to uh, your interpretation. Here's a proposed uh, method for proposals. Here are the kind of projects you can do. These are the pedagogic points that it hits for you guys according to your accreditation requirements. Yeah. Right? And right. then it's, it's more likely you're going to get um, uh, get get folks' attention. And it's always so um, to help you frame a little bit what it's like for the the coordinator for Capstone. Um, we typically we solicit on the order of 35 to 40 individual different projects every year, and from that it's somewhere between 25 and 30 get picked depending on the number of students that we have and the, the number of teams that are there. Interesting. Uh, I just want to make one other quick comment uh, Go ahead, Glenn. about um, one of the things you mentioned, you started to talk a little bit more at the beginning there about individuals with disabilities and their, their presence on the campus and some of the privileges they, uh, don't under have. privileges I guess they don't have. And uh, boy, was that ever an eye opener for our project because we actually decided at the beginning we were going to try and hire campus coordinators that were persons with disabilities. Yeah. Boy, was it ever interesting to try and watch and work through the interactions of the individuals with disabilities and the champion in the, in the engineering uh, department, wherever it was. Could have been a, a dean. It could have been a... A capstone coordinator could have been anybody, but the 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 kickback that we got, some as blatant as, well, 
I, I can't work with that person. I mean, they have a disability, like, uh, you know, and I was just, yeah. like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but do you, do you remember, I mean, I, I was, you know, I was just starting at Neil Squire when Rick Hansen was finishing his Man in Motion tour, and it was like, oh, we've finally, you know, woken up, and it's it's like a lot of causes. Yeah, we have, but we haven't. Yeah, yeah. So. Thanks a lot, uh, Glenn, for that uh, question and uh, feedback you had. And Marcus, thank you so much uh, for that great presentation you gave. Uh, I know I've been involved with this in Ottawa, but I definitely learned quite a bit having your perspective and the uh, experience that you shared with us. Um, we are uh, running out of time. It's 1.58, yep. um, but everyone has uh, Marcus's uh, email. So if you, and maybe his phone number is online, the internet somewhere too, if you yeah, want. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Um, so use, use email. Use email. I, I lose track of phone calls. And... I, I just wanted to tease you that phone call. Uh, 